that, but I'm so excited about that. That's great, man. That's great, man. Okay. How did you learn how to do all this stuff? Like you just you just busted out with a bunch of knowledge right now. Like uh, what's going on? Well, what's honestly <laughs> <laughs> Bernice, good morning, Bernice. You too, Bernice. Good morning. <laughs> Fuzzy muggins. Get you guys some water. They've been really, they've been really digging up these hills right here. They've been going to town on them. Hey guys, my name is Jason from So The Land, and if you like these videos, make sure you hit that thumbs up button, and make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this content. On average, we get about 1,500 to 2,000 thumbs ups on each video, but then we have 18,000 to 20,000 views per video about, so maybe we could get that thumbs up, more thumbs ups. <laughs> but today I'm headed to FedEx. Exciting stuff guys. We're doing exciting stuff here. Finally finished that mountain art that I've been working on and I've been showing you guys on our vlog videos here. It was a custom order and then after I finished that I needed to make a crate for it. I gotta feed these meat birds. I better start doing that. Another thing we gotta do today is that Lorraine is updating our Etsy page and she's putting on some more product in here of her Plain Jane Lorraine natural skincare line that she's doing, that she has been doing for over eight years now. So we need to update the website and drop off this crate at FedEx. Having some eggs this morning, guys, with some collard greens. Some of the last greens in our garden currently. We still have greens growing, but they're just not ready yet. So we're launching today. Today's a really big day. We're launching for Plain Jane Lorraine. Um, I already have several other products in my line, and today is a new day. We are gonna launch this new product. It is called the Body Care Oil, and it's something that our family has been using for over a year now and we absolutely love it and as soon as we run out we're like oh, we need to make more because it's just better than lotion so we gave up lotion um about over a year ago and we started using this body oil and so by the time this video comes out it'll already be there so head on over to our etsy page to check it out and some of the other plain jane lorraine products that i have you can get some coffee going and then i need to update our etsy page all right, so we're updating this body care oil on our Etsy page. Guys, these are all organic ingredients. It's right in the description. Some photos. We need to adjust some of these photos. All right, let's hit publish. This is what our Etsy page looks like. Just type in Sudland on Etsy or there's a link. <laughs> we have Bernie's sticker packs. I need to update Plain Jane Lorraine nourishing cream because we sold out. All right, boom, done. We just picked up our Azure order. We got a lot going, a lot of things going on this week. It was such a small order, but I, I wanted to share that you don't have to order a bunch of stuff from Azure. Um, you can just order a little bit. Here's what we got for this month of September. We've got these raw pumpkin seeds. Our family really likes pumpkin seeds. I like to put this in baking and in oatmeal. We eat quite a bit of pumpkin seeds. And then a 
think this is one of the most exciting things of our order this month. These are dried cranberries, but not only are they just regular dried cranberries, these are organic, and it's so hard to find dried organic cranberries with no sugar. So if you take a look at the ingredients, these are organic cranberries. They are sweetened with organic apple juice. So that's so exciting. There's no sugar in here. You know, our family doesn't do a whole lot of um, processed sugar. We've got our avocado oil. Our family likes to cook with avocado oil and Azure's quality is always guaranteed the best. Fragile. All right, so now I gotta head over to FedEx. Well, I gotta load this beast up and then ship it off to New York. Woo, all right, just got back from FedEx. And actually we shipped that out UPS and they're headed to New York. And so change of plans, guys. I was just gonna head home after this, but a friend of mine said, hey, he has some extra honey from his bees. And so I'm headed down there to pick up some, some honey and uh, exchange honey for some of that uh, garlic that we planted or that we harvested early on in the year. <laughs> All right, so I'm here with my friend Billy, and Billy just moved to the area. I came to pick up some honey. He called me up and he's like, "Yeah, I got extra honey." <laughs> yeah, that's how we roll, man. We had so far the good Lord's blessed us, man. We got somewhere in the neighborhood of this year, maybe 20 gallons. So we, I thought, you know what, maybe my homeboy Jason could use some of it. <laughs> we could, we could, and we have a bunch of garlic too. So we'll give him some some garlic too, and kind of barter, I guess. Yeah, fair trade, man. That's the way I, it's worth more than money We're these trying. days. Yeah. And so these are your bees. Yeah, yeah, bro. This is uh, these are six hives. Hopefully they're not too too crazy right now because we got some honey just two days ago from them. But we had to take out about we had 11 total, and we took out about five of them because we made some foolish mistakes. We're still new in this whole beekeeping thing, but we're we're, we're making some good progress, and uh, we know what not to do next time. You have a fence around them that's on. Yeah, this is a bear fence. It's not on right now. At least yeah. it better not be, or I'm <laughs> going to get Kentucky fried today. But yeah, this bear fence, we were lucky. They say the lady where we picked blueberries uh, about a month ago, she said there's two types of people in uh, North Carolina that keep bees. People that have bear problems and those that don't know it yet. So I don't want to be that person that finds out that, hey, these bees are having, these bees are having a very bad day because I lack the foresight to put up a bear fence. But it was very easy, very cheap, and it took about 30 minutes to put up. So, I mean, Have you had small a problem? investment. Have you seen a bear? I haven't seen any yet, but uh, the guys up the road, they told us they've seen bear, mountain lions, everything. You got some meat birds right here. So using uh, yeah, Justin's these, chicken tractor yeah, version. These, these, this is like a Justin Rhodes inspired chicken tractor. Um, what we're gonna do with it though, is what we did last time. We raised 40 birds absolutely free, in fact, we put money into our pockets when you consider the compost that these guys made. The last batch made seven cubic yards of compost and we spent absolutely nothing. So we put close to 200 pounds of meat into the freezer and didn't spend a dime on it. So. And how much did you raise at that time? Like how many birds? There was 40 birds in this same birds. tractor. This time we got 45. And I think honestly we could get up to 60 when it's all said and done. They're gonna make the transition into Jeff Lawton's chicken tractor on steroids. So instead of producing seven cubic yards of compost, which I can show you what's left of it, this time I'm hoping to produce almost double that. This is the last, under this tarp is what's left of what the last chicken tractor on steroids produced. When we process the chickens, this is what's left after putting their guts and the way we processed them this time, this is the bones, the guts, the feathers, the beaks, the feet of 40 birds in this compost pile right here. Like how long does this take? It took actually about 21 days for this particular pile because we kept adding stuff to it. The cool thing about permaculture, bro, is that we're taking everything. We have a driveway over to my right. 
the cool thing is everything we pull out of here these guys will tractor through the landscape and leave behind there was nothing but weeds here and just bare dirt and look what they leave behind it the cool thing is we're feeding ourselves we're feeding the birds and then the cool thing is we're taking this compost walking literally across the driveway you know maybe 10 15 steps and then on this side of the driveway all the way down we have the beginnings of a permaculture orchard so the way that works is every third tree is a nitrogen fixer like in this particular case we have a we have a black locust and then about 10 feet away will be a productive tree which is like this one here this apple and then there'll be another productive tree and then another black locust so in the rotation every third tree will be a black locust and then each tree is adorned with a bunch of stuff that it wants like comfrey things that we can chop and drop but in this case we feed this stuff to our chickens i mean it, it's a bio accumulator so we feed it to our chickens and our sheep and they absolutely love it and of course we have a mulch ring we just put this stuff in let's take a look at what this stuff looks like <laughs> unbelievable this is these are wood chips we just put on on top but this is the nasty soil that used to be here there's absolutely no cardboard left i mean look at that soil and that's literally just taking the bedding from the chickens and throwing it on top of here but here's the here's the really cool thing about permaculture is that there's some debate out there as to whether or not you should put a nitrogen fixer in the same mulch ring as your productive tree now in this case we got an apple and when we put this apple in in early spring it was a bare root about this high if you look at it now this thing's seven feet tall if not larger all because we have a volunteer nitrogen fixer in there all these bare root trees roughly came about two feet tall but if you look at all the other trees up and down here at best the tallest one may be about five feet this one's seven and we attribute that with allowing this nitrogen fixer to fix nitrogen down into the soil and let your beneficial tree reap the benefits for it we had an incredible deer problem here and the cool thing about this is it was a total experiment we used a method it's called bone sauce where we took all the bones from the chickens completed this process made popular by a guy named Sepp Holzer it's the time of year where we can't take that sauce and put it directly onto the tree so we put these wooden posts in and we painted these posts with bone sauce and I'm here to tell you there has not been a deer back on this property they'll screw they'll go around they'll walk through but they will not touch these trees and we didn't even put this stuff on there and supposedly it lasts 30 years we got peppers in here ready to go bro this thing is I think it's the best thing ever man it's got it's a 14 instead of being a 16 by 16 like most of them are this one is a 14 by 14 a fraction of the weight and one person can push this thing easily even in this rough terrain so as these guys go through they're taking these nasty all these nasty weeds that are a result of overgrazing they're knocking all these weeds out and what's coming behind it is what you see over there we're seeing a serious polyculture not just one thing as it was once before but now we're seeing improvement okay when we got this property back in November you did not see what you currently see right now you don't see these swords of grass you don't see the diversity what you saw were weeds and I can show them to you because we have them in the succession over here what they were were weeds and what we've done with high density grazing with just a handful of sheep and moving them quite often what we've done is we're getting a diversity in the soil that should already be there but they've used chemicals they've used a lot of things in here that that you know people like us don't really want to use but the cool thing about it is is nature's forgiving it'll allow you to allow it to remediate itself if you give it the impact it needs and let it rest so we got the bees doing their job we got the sheep doing their job we got the chickens doing their job we're not only getting incredible abundance out of this place and we just got started three principles of permaculture is earth care people care and abundance given to the previous two so having that abundance lets us to be a, allows us to be a blessing to other people and to ourselves so i mean i, I can't think of a better way to live <laughs> sorry bro i didn't mean to monologue like that but i'm so excited about that's great man that's great man okay 
how did you learn how to do all this stuff? Like you just you just busted out with a bunch of knowledge right now. Like, uh, what's going on? Well, what's honestly <laughs> <laughs> what's been a big help honestly is um, being an autodidact and being a person who loves to learn. Yeah. But when this is, when these are things that you just absolutely I go to sleep at night and I think about this and I go in, I wake up in the morning I go to sleep. People like Joel Salatin, Alan Savory, Jeff Lawton, Bill Mullison. I mean, Mark Shepard, Elaine Ingram. I mean the the learning never stops to me yeah. it's just finding these people out there that have so many awesome uh things that you want to learn and then what we've taken is an amalgamation like what you see in this food forest is an is an amalgamation i'm sorry this permaculture orchard is an amalgamation of stefan subkoviak jeff lawton mark shepherd elaine ingham all those people all those lessons that we've learned from every one of those people right. has been brought to bear in just what we have coming out of the ground right now the the wonderful improved soil we're standing on right now is a result of learning from jeff lawton mm -hmm. learning from um joel salatin most importantly all these different influences in my life that have taught me reading publications like stockman grass farmer and things like that and going out there making colossal mistakes that's the part you don't see is yeah, that before yeah. we got to this place we had made colossal mistakes in what not to do. So we feel like in our YouTube channel, what we want to try to do is help people, instead of making all the unnecessary mistakes that we've made in the past, that maybe we're at a point now where we feel like we can be a blessing and have people not make the mistakes we've had and get out there and do what they got to yeah. do. And that's what I was going to get at. This guy has his own YouTube channel. What is it? Tell, <laughs> tell us what it is. Perma Pastures Farm, bro. Perma Pastures Farm. I'll put that link down below. Cool. But you guys should check it out. The whole reason we're here actually is because of a conversation I had with you about a year ago, actually, maybe this month, about a year ago, yep. asking you about the area. <laughs> we got here and I'm just elated and I'm looking at a bunch of pumpkins up there right now, bro, that need to get picked, but we'll yep. come back to those All later. Right. But yeah, man, you've been, a, you've been a real blessing. And as far as us finding our way here, there's so much more to do, right. but I'm looking forward to every day of it. Can't think of a better way to spend I still feel the same life. way. Like we, we, we've been here over four and a half years and I still feel like, like excited, you know, to, to, you know, be driving and be like, wow, look at all this green. You know, I'm still like that. I know. You know, wow, you know, like all these bugs. Yeah, yeah and all <laughs> this know? rain, man. All this All right, so that was Billy. <laughs> nice little trip just to see what he has going on here. He's doing some cool stuff here. This is all the honey that we got today. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh wow. He said he had three harvests this year of, of honey. So they had too much. Thanks, Billy. <laughs> <laughs>